The last couple of years have witnessed some of the greatest mangas being adapted into anime series and films. In fact, the famous anime production house MAPPA has released a long line of anime content, both new and returning shows. MAPPA's popularity has reached such heights that fans have claimed the advent of the Dark Shonen Trio. Similar to the concept of the Big Three in the world of anime, the Dark Shonen Trio has emerged as some of the most talked about shows in recent years. And in case you're wondering which shows we're talking about, it's Jujutsu Kaisen, Chain Saw Man and Hell's Paradise. With the release of Hell's Paradise this year, the dark shonen genre has been delving further into the abyss of explicit imagery, intense action, and graphic violence. This is being done with the help of an engaging cast and an equally thought-provoking narrative that influences the experiences of each character in the story. After all, behind the crazy action on screen lies a mystery, a quest that brings all the characters together as they head for one goal. And as a thrilling dark fantasy story, Hell's Paradise is no exception. Although Gabimaru and Yamada Asemon Sagiri lead the entire cast, the supporting characters play major roles in their quest to find the Elixir of Life. The very basis of Hell's Paradise, the Elixir of Life, is a potion that promises eternal youth to the one who consumes it. Interestingly, this is quite a popular trope among various popular animes and western pop culture as well. So, what makes the quest in Hell's Paradise different from the rest? In this video, we'll be answering this question as we explore the nuances of this mythical element and encompass its significance significance to the characters as well as the plot. Immortality for Eternity, the trope of the elixir of life in pop culture. To be able to stay young and live forever is one of the most yearned over aspirations among people, real and fictitious. And pop culture has its own share of characters who are obsessed with the very notion that the elixir of life promised eternal youth to us mere mortals. For instance, Hakuki portrays this idea in the form of the Ochimizu, or the water of life. Inspired by the Japanese mythology of the moon god Tsukiyomi, it has exceptional hearing capabilities and can also bestow eternal youth upon its user. Another anime following this trend is Full Metal Alchemist, dabbling with the elixir of life as being synonymous with the Philosopher's Stone. It's considered a panacea of sorts that can cure any disease and increase the lifespan of its user. And, in case you're wondering, yes, the very first installment in the Harry Potter franchise centers around a similar Philosopher's Stone. In the cinematic world of Harry Potter, though, the Philosopher's Stone has two capabilities. It's able to turn any metallic object into gold with a touch, and it can create an elixir of immortality that extends the lifespan of Voldemort, the main antagonist in the franchise. Other Hollywood examples include the 2008 film The Mummy, Tomb of the Dragon Emperor, in which the elixir of life has been dubbed as the Eye of Shangri-La, the mystical water of the land of Shangri-La that promises eternal youth to the person who drinks it. Interestingly, in the Arthurian legends of England, the same properties are attributed to the Holy Grail, a cup or dish with phenomenal powers of healing as well as providing immortality to whoever drinks from it. This was depicted wonderfully in the 1989 action-adventure film Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, where Indy, played by Harrison Ford, saves his father, played by Sean Connery, by making him drink some water from the Holy Grail. But this doesn't mean that the elixir is entirely fictional. In human history, there have been a lot of attempts by religious cults, alchemists, and emperors to seek the ultimate solution for prolonging human life. In Indian mythology, for instance, it's known as Amrita, a powerful element that is extracted by churning the vast oceans of milk and thus sustains the divine life of the gods. In ancient Greek mythology, it goes by the name of ambrosia, which is the food and drink of the gods and goddesses. So we can all agree that the idea of an immortal elixir is not something new or out of the world. We, the members of the human race, have been obsessed with the idea of living forever and have been seeking ways to extend our own longevity. That way, we are in no way different from the characters in Hell's Paradise. Well, there is one vital difference though. They search for the elixir of life to seek an official pardon from the Shogun, according to which they would no longer be branded criminals and would live the life of a free man. So searching for the elixir is the same as looking for freedom from the shackles of death, both literally and metaphorically. So what does Gabimaru, the main protagonist, have to do with the elixir? And most importantly, does he need the elixir for his own self? Well, not exactly. The Quest for Eternal You Why is Gabimaru looking for the Elixir of Life? Before we explore Gabimaru's intentions regarding the elixir, let's first take a look at how this mythical substance is a key plot element in Hell's Paradise. Episode 2 of Season 1 gives the convicts, as well as us viewers, a brief idea regarding the nature of the Elixir of Life. The story takes place during the Edo period. The de facto rulers came across details of a certain potion on a mythical island that promises eternal life to the person who consumes it. Brownie points to those that can guess the name of that island. 
And if not, keep watching this video for the answer. Anyways, ever since the news of its existence was spread far and wide, the Shoguns have sent several expedition teams to this island with hopes of retrieving this immortal elixir. However, none of the members of the team have been able to return. Instead, there were dead bodies in the boats that floated back to shore with heaps of flowers blooming from severed human body parts. The only person who was able to make it back alive from the mysterious island was an officer, who eventually succumbed to the blisters on his face, which burst into floral buds. Thus, the officer turns into a half-dead person with flowers blooming from his body as he smiles in a state of limbo. As we progress further in the story, the douches offer more clarity regarding the elixir. Until this point, most of the characters in Hell's Paradise were uncertain of whether such a thing actually existed or not, given the lack of evidence supporting the same. Turns out, the immortal elixir does exist in reality, that is, in the world of Jigo Kuraku. According to the douches, the elixir is extracted from the Taon, a prototype of the mythical potion. Made by Lord Tenson, the Taon is made by harvesting the Tao, which is the life force of human beings, and throwing them into the pits of flowers, as we see in episode 7, where Chobei and Toma are dropped into one such pit by the Tenson. In these pits, the flower bud wraps the human and drains their life force until they turn into corpses with flowers bursting open from their bodies. In short, the human Tao is the basis of the same elixir of life that the human race is searching for. Now let's come back to our previous question. What does Gabimaru have to do with this magical potion? As we see in his brief yet insightful interaction with Yamada Aseimon Sagiri in the first two episodes, there are only two reasons why Gabimaru is part of this expedition, to go back home to his wife and to lead their lives as a normal couple. Ever since he got married off to Yui, the eighth daughter of the notorious village chief of Iwagakure, Gabimaru has undergone a change of heart regarding his own life and career as an assassin. Yui's presence can be characterized as a balm to a tough and painful childhood that was devoid of human civility. From being taught to take off his shoes before he enters the house, to praying before every meal, Gabimaru seemed to have begun a new life which brims with warmth and affection, the blissful emotions that he had never experienced before. Unfortunately, his decision to retire from being an assassin resulted in his own detainment. In the words of Gabimaru the Hollow, one will never be able to escape Iwagakure from the clutches of the horrifying village sheep, and for those who desire to, they'll be punished with death. And this is how Gabimaru ended up as a convict on death row until he met Yamada Aseimon Sagiri. Having learned of an opportunity to step away from his life as a shinobi and start afresh is something Gabimaru would never let go of at any cost. Like he tells Sagiri, he would come back home with the elixir, even if it meant giving up his own life for it. So, where would Gabimaru find the elixir? In fact, where exactly is the elixir of life? A heaven of hell. A hell of heaven. Exploring the geography of Shinsenko. Satan, in book one of John Milton's Paradise Lost, makes this brilliant proclamation of how one's perception can be changed to see heaven as an infernal place or hell as a paradise. Perhaps this is the philosophy with which Shinsenko was first conceived, the island where the vanguard party are to look for the elixir of life. Shinsenko, also known as Kotaku, is situated in the southwest sea stretching beyond the Ryukyu kingdom. The entire island consists of three major regions. The first is Ishu, the outer part of Shinsenko that consists of the coastal areas and its nearby regions. Ishu is protected by the Soshin, a group of horrifying monsters with the purpose of killing trespassers who come to the island. Next, we have Hojo, the middlemost region between the Ishu and the center. This valley consists of a village which was once inhabited by the Hoko race of people, until they underwent the process of arborification, which is the metamorphosis of living beings upon exposure to the flower Tao on the island. In the case of the Hoko race, the aborification resulted in them becoming tree bark and eventually turning into inanimate beings. Finally, we come to the center of the island, which is Horai. This is the place where the Lord Tenson and the Dushis dwell. Over the course of Hell's Paradise, it is revealed that this island has been eyed by humans for centuries. As a matter of fact, there have been several attempts by human beings to retrieve samples of the elixir, only to lose their life in the hands of the Soshin, or worse, by the Tenson themselves. However, this loss of life does not entirely mean that the people who have come to the island eventually die. Instead, the flowers and insects, particularly the butterflies, give off the flower Tau, which transforms any living being into a corpse in a gleeful trance, as flowers sprout from the lifeless body. In this process, the human Tau is converted into a Taun, the rudimentary form of the elixir of life that Lord Tenson consumes on a regular basis. After all, the elixir of life was explicitly shown in only one scene in Hell's Paradise when the Tenson raised their cups filled with the much-coveted drink in Episode 9. So, there's a high chance that the elixir simply runs through all of Shinsenko, 
but can only be extracted in its true form by the Tensin in Horai. Seems like a fantastical story, doesn't it? Well, many characters in Hell's Paradise would agree as well. Towards the beginning of Season 1, Yamada Asemon saw Giri could not help but question the credibility of the sources from which information regarding Shinsenko was gathered. On top of that, she also seems certain to an extent that the elixir is just a myth and nothing more. However, our protagonist believes otherwise. In a flashback from his childhood, Gabimaru recollects one instant where several masked people attacked the Iwagakure chief by impaling him with every weapon that could be conceived of by human imagination. Even after the horrible sight of his intestines slipping out of his corporeal form, the chief was standing straight with a maniacal smile on his face, as he went on to remove a sword with which he was stabbed through the skull. Besides rumors surrounding his consumption of a substance that has prolonged his life, the fact that the chief was not physically affected by these gruesome injuries, especially with his gut split open, convinced the young Gabimaru that not only was he immune to pain and could recover instantly, but he was also an immortal being. In other words, to Gabi Maru, the Iwagakure chief is the only living proof that the elixir of life might actually exist in the world of Hell's Paradise. Marvelous Verdict The elixir of life is intricately woven into the story of Hell's Paradise, as well as the life of Gabimaru. In the plot, it embodies the clash of magic and logic, belief and disbelief, truth and myth, so much so that this substance by itself resides in the liminal zone of the zeal and the unreal. And to the legendary shinobi of Iwagakure, this elixir of life does not intrigue him with its mystical qualities. Rather, for Gabimaru, it is an instrument of his redemption, a way in which he can achieve his ultimate goal, to lead a life as a normal human being with the person he loves the most.